things at the same time, right? So blockchains plus zero knowledge proofs are a very powerful combination. So what does ZK Snarks do, right? ZK Snarks, just as a reminder, they're a way of proving that some function about some piece of data is true, right? So for example, you can prove that you are a member of a particular group, but you could keep private which member of the group you are, right? Um, so if you want to have a system where only people within some organization can vote, for example, then you can use a ZK snark to prove that you're in an organization that, that you are in the organization without revealing which particular member you are. Um, so ZK snarks are a very powerful technology. They can also be used for scalability because verifying a proof can be much faster than running the computation yourself, right? So ZK rollups, for example, or, or ZK validiums, they use ZK snarks to prove that computation is being done correctly. So there's three ways to build on Ethereum, basically. There is uh, building on the directly on the Ethereum L1, which is how most people have built on Ethereum for most of its history. You can build on a rollup or a plasma, or you can build on a lower security layer two system, such as, uh, for example, a uh, validium, right? And the choice of these three basically depends on how important security is, right? So financial applications, for example, security is very important. If something breaks, you lose money. And so for those kinds of applications, building on the L1 or building on a rollup or a plasma is a very uh, valuable thing to, uh, to do. But if you're building games, for example, you don't need L1, you don't need a plasma, you should probably build on a uh, Validium. Um, if you're doing like some industrial supply chain application, for example, you probably want to build on a uh, Validium. Now, one way to view what a uh, Validium is, is uh, you can view it as a layer two on top of a blockchain. There's also another way to view what a Validium is, which is that you can think of it as an application that runs on a server, but then you publish hashes to the chain to Ethereum, and you publish proofs to Ethereum, which verify that whatever the rules of the Validium are, those rules are being followed, right? So three different ways. So build on the Ethereum blockchain directly, maximum security but high cost. Then you have what I call strong or security favoring layer twos. Uh, so things uh, uh, of rollups, and there's another technology called Plasma that I've uh, written about recently that inherit full security from Ethereum, so just as secure as Ethereum, but they do computation and most data storage off-chain, and so they are more efficient. And then there are what I call light or scale-favoring layer twos, systems that inherit some security guarantees by using Ethereum. Usually what happens here is that um, the system does not guarantee liveness. So if the operator disappears, they can still disappear, but they guarantee safety. So they guarantee that if a hash is published to chain, the, and there, that hash reflects changes to the database, then whatever those changes to the database are, the rules are being followed. The database is being changed in ways that reflect the rules for how they are supposed to be changed. So. Uh, these uh, Validium techniques, they're very easy to deploy. They are actually practical to take an existing server-based application and write uh, some extra code that runs on the side um, and basically turns existing centralized applications into uh, Validiums. Um, so I think anyone here who has tried to make an application using a private blockchain, I highly recommend that um, you know if they failed, if they were got disillusioned, if it was too complicated, to try again using a uh, Validium that commits into uh, Ethereum. A common pattern in Validiums is to do everything off-chain, publish hashes on-chain, and you have ZK snark proofs that proving that the hashes are being updated correctly. So choosing between rollups and Validiums, some examples of uh, different applications that have uh, some uh, different uh, trade-offs here, right? So um, financial applications, basically. So account key stores are like a logic that is responsible for like managing your entire account on a blockchain. Um, high value financial assets. Um, so ETH, ERC-20, stable coins, um, definitely be on rollups. Um, ENS names, 
Um, lower value financial activity could go either way. But then if you think about non-financial enterprise applications, games, tokens for centrally managed ecosystems, so things like loyalty points, here, security is less important because if something breaks, there is some centralized operator that could potentially reset the system or migrate the system somewhere else. Um, and scale is very important because there is a huge amount of activity. And so applications over here definitely should be Validiums instead. So some specific examples of near-term institutional applications. Uh, so proof of solvency, right? I think. Uh, the crypto industry is, uh, to me, about creating security technologies. But as we have seen with Mt. Gox, FTX, other cases, the crypto industry has its own internal um, security um, and the trust problems. And so I think crypto technologies first should be used to solve problems within the crypto space itself. There is an idea that has existed for over 10 years called uh, proof of solvency, which basically involves a crypto exchange cryptographically proving that they have enough money to match all of the balances that users have on the exchange, right? So if an exchange does a proof of solvency, then you could not have a Mt. Gox or an FTX-like situation where the yeah, exchange is, like pretends to have money, but actually they're a fractional reserve, right? If the exchange would have to make constant proofs that prove that for all of the yeah, user balances, they are actually currently holding enough coins that match those balances. Now, this is um, something that can be done with zero knowledge proofs. And actually, this is basically a type of Validium, right? So people usually don't think of it as a type of Validium, but it is, right? And, and so this is something that I highly encourage cryptocurrency exchanges themselves um, to uh, use as a technology. And um, I think also I encourage um, regulators to um, take uh, these kinds of technologies into account when uh, judging I mean, like what level of risk um, you consider a particular exchange as being in and uh, you know, like what kind of uh, regulations get applied, right? I think uh, the more that someone proves technologically, the less that they need to prove the the traditional way by uh, you know like proving that they are a trustworthy person, have uh, you know like licenses, have insurance, and these kinds of standard techniques, right? Tech cryptographic techniques definitely cannot solve all problems, but when there is a problem that they can solve, um, it's uh, I think good for exchanges to use these techniques, and I think it's good to. Um, also reward um, exchanges for using these uh, kinds of techniques. Some voting applications. Um, so I think in this voting case, it's especially important to start with what I call like lighter voting apps. So things that are not full scale national elections, local elections, um, even online things like social media, even things like uh, you know, creating funds um, where people be able to use things like quadratic voting to vote on uh, where like funds might go for specific projects, um, games. Uh, so if people want to create ecosystems where you can move items between different games, um, identity related applications. Um, so credential replication, uh, so proving that a yeah, credential that, or like some attestation, like something that you that you said about someone is still valid and was not canceled for some reason. That's a blockchain application, provably limited issuance, proving that if you issued something, you issued some limited quantity of them. Um, so also things that can be done with blockchains. Um, and uh, these are also uh, things that can be done with uh, Validiums or rollups and similar applications. So there's a lot of different uh, use cases that are like this. Um, and I think uh, the big thing that is uh, important to take away right now is that there are multiple ways to use Ethereum, right? And uh, different ways make sense for different applications, right? Some of these ways are basically are very purist in the sense that they try to do everything in a blockchain style. They try to be completely decentralized, completely open. Anyone can participate, completely global. And I think this is good for a lot of things. But there are also other applications where there, what you really want is you have some existing centralized workflow, and you don't even want to change it that much. What you want is to add security to it, right? And there are also ways to use Ethereum, like some of these uh, techniques involving zero-knowledge proofs and Validiums, 
that you can do on top of Ethereum that require surprisingly little change. They just require some extra piece of code that you write on the side and then add on top of Ethereum, right? Um, so that is, uh, so the slide to kind of summarize here, right, is uh, basically this, right? It's like, if uh, you need very high levels of security, then like you take the more pure blockchain approaches. If you really need scale, or if you really need, um, you know, like, uh, uh, like institutional okay. privacy, uh, or if there is other considerations, uh, then there are uh, these like, semi-centralized approaches that still gain a lot of security by building on Ethereum. And like both of these are valuable, right? And uh, like I think it's uh, important to know that both options um, exist um, and uh, like this is the choice that you're making when you decide like which of these strategies for building on ethereum um, makes sense uh, for your um, application um, so thank you all right I hope you can hear the applause here that's uh, like everyone is very happy everyone is very happy with, uh, you know, having you here but, uh, with uh, us at B2GC. Us at B2GC. I'm Anthony. B2GC. I am the I'm deputy Anthony. CEO I'm of Finstable, the organizer of B2GC, B2GC, B2GC itself. B2GC we are really, really happy and really, really grateful and, and honored to have you and here and on, have on have stream and to and share with us your valuable thoughts on Ethereum and also on the rollout of Layer 1s and also eventually Layer 2s. Yes, thank you guys so much for inviting me. Oh, great. It's, it's our honor. It is, so, um, there are some questions that uh, we do have for you. Um, are you okay with that? Um, are you okay with that? <laughs> Perfect. So, um, right now in Thailand, it is um, one of the flagship policy of the Prime Minister to roll out the 10,000 Thai baht airdrop to 40,000 to 50,000 Thais here in Thailand. So what do you think of this, you know, um, airdrop of, of this uh, digital Thai bot to the people? And how do you think it, uh, Ethereum can help in this rollout? Yeah, I mean, I think it would definitely be really cool to uh, like try something like that, like actually build it on top of uh, something like a uh, Validium, right? And like there's even existing solutions for this, like Starkware, for example, um, you know, like works on uh, technologies like this. Um, you know, like Arbitrum um, does, um, like a Polygon and uh, plenty of uh, groups. And I think uh, what's important here would be to start with like some like reasonably small use case where the number of people like doesn't just like go straight to 10 million. You want to start with uh, something small and then think about like what is a particular benefit that you want to try to get by building this um, on on a uh, uh, probably a Validium would be the best uh, strategy to start off um, instead of just using a server. Um, so, like, one example would be, like, interoperability with uh, stablecoins, for example, um, in which case, um, you know, you could just, like, directly plug in to Ethereum and, like, use um, you know, like the decentralized exchange ecosystem. Um, another example might be to um, actually just, uh, like, j just be able to prove um, that, um, you know, when payments are uh, made, when funds are transferred, that like everything is being uh, processed uh, correctly and like have very easy ways for people to like, actually yeah, verify all of those things. Another area to experiment in as well might also be privacy, right? I think uh, one of the challenges with uh, like digitizing cash is that privacy can be yeah, very easily lost. Um, but if you combine um, like diff like zero knowledge proofs in the right way, um, then and build them in, then you can create a um, system where like you can give uh, privacy to users, and at the same time, um, you know you can do things like limit amounts of money per person, um, like um, be able to uh, like you know like have privacy systems that. Um, like exclude, um, you know, like known mal malicious activity and like just like do other things that can really reduce the risks of uh, introducing that kind of feature. Um, so I think that's also an interesting direction, right? Um, so yeah, in general, I think uh, 
it would be really yeah, interesting to try to like have some kind of pilot where like you identify one particular like thing you might want to get by you know, like some benefit that you get out of being on a blockchain like some implementation and like actually yeah you know like try it in like one city or one place and or one industry and see where it goes from there yeah, I totally agree. Right. And uh, in regards to privacy, I think the debate would really be a very extensive one, especially if you involve the ministries and also the government as well, right? So, uh, we have a question from the Minister of uh, Digital Economy and Society himself. So, he would like to ask, if Ethereum is, um, you know, so established and, you know, with such a renowned protocol, how would Ethereum help the Thai government to blockchain the all the different you know departments of the Thailand government what are the next steps yeah that's a a good question. I mean, I think, uh, I mean, in the uh, Ethereum um, ecosystem and the, uh, like, the Ethereum Foundation itself, we focus on, like, core research, core development. Um, it's been announced, um, you know, like, that uh, DEF CON is uh, going to be in uh, Thailand uh, now, and uh, obviously the, the Foundation is... Uh, very uh, involved in that, right? Um, but it's, uh, I think for like working with uh, specific uh, applications, like we have this amazing layer two ecosystem, right? So I mentioned, uh, you know, Starkware, Polygon, Arbitrum are some of the big players. A lot of them would be uh, very happy to try to like interface with uh, the uh, government on uh, any uh, specific solution. Um, and so, I think I um, you know highly encourage contacting uh, some of them. I mean, uh, highly yeah, encourage. Um, you know, there's definitely yet yeah, like other people whose names I can uh, get, I can give offline as well, who uh, would be good for um, just got, like sp out specifically outreaching and uh, starting that conversation. And then I um, mean, you know, like yeah, let's uh, start the conversation. Let's like start identifying you know like one piece where we can start with uh, something meaningful and uh, let's go from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think. I think that is really a fantastic answer. So I think uh, time is short, but I'll just, you know, steal what last minute of your time. So one last question. So there's a lot of um, developers here in Thailand that is focused very heavily on EVM. A lot of the developers here, even here within FinStable, really favors, you know, Solidity, right, as a programming language. So um, we would really love to have a meeting with you physically here in Thailand, if possible. I know that uh, you are coming down to the Thailand at the end of the year, but we would really, really love to, to have a meeting with you because even our educational material is really like uh, based off Ethereum and, and uh, you know, the Solidity uh, protocol. So last okay. question to you, so last question. Uh, would you be happy to come down to Thailand to have a meet with us, you know, possibly in, in our April event? Would that sound good to you? Would that sound good to you? Oh, April, um, unfortunately, I'll be yeah, in Europe. But uh, when I do come to Thailand, I will uh, no, absolutely yeah, let you guys know. And uh, you know, what I would absolutely, yeah, absolutely look forward to spending time with the, yeah, with the local de uh, developer community. And uh, yeah, let's uh, see what we can build together. OK, great. We'll look forward to meeting you. All right, thank you so much. Thank you, Vitalik. Thank you so see you. Thank you, Vitalik. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you so much, bye. Thank you everyone.